Hey everybody, this is the second of the four videos today. This one we're going to talk about inference in general, and we're going to talk about categorical versus quantitative variables. We're going to talk about one versus two samples, and when to use confidence intervals versus hypothesis testing. Sort of a brief overview of what we've done since uh, the probability section. So there is a handout or note sheet, if you like, posted on Moodle, and you might want to follow along on that as you go. It has eight pages. The first four are blank. The second four are filled in. So you don't have to worry about uh, filling things in as you go along, but you might want to look at the blank one first so that you can think about things as we go and not just see the answer before, um, before we talk about it. So first we're going to talk about what is inference? What is inference? So inference, z-tests for proportions are used in inference. Statistical inference is to draw conclusions about what from what. Are we drawing conclusions about the sample from the entire population? Are we drawing conclusions about the entire population from a sample? Well, you have to think, which one do we know about and which one do we not know about? We know about the sample. We don't know about the population. We don't have access to the whole population. So we're going to use the sample to draw conclusions about the population. We're going to use what we know about, what we've seen, to draw conclusions about what we don't know about. The population is really what we want to know about, but we don't have access to the whole thing, so we're going to have to use a sample to draw conclusions about the entire population. Okay, then we use z-tests with what kind of data? Categorical or quantitative? Well, we use z-tests with categorical data. Starting in chapter 23, probably later this week, definitely later this week, we'll be talking about t-tests. T-tests are used with quantitative data when we're interested in means. But z-tests for proportions are used with categorical data. So which of the following variables are categorical? I have six variables listed. Smoking status. Well, you either smoke or you don't, so that's categorical. Dog owner. You either are or are not a dog owner, so that is categorical. Age. Well, age is a number, a number we can add and subtract and divide and multiply, um, so that is quantitative. The number of dogs someone owns. Quantitative. How many dogs? What's the number? Cancer survivor. You either are or are not a cancer survivor. So that would be categorical. And do you or do you not wear a bike helmet? Categorical. You do or you don't. Yes or no. So four of these are categorical. And two of them, age and number of dogs, are quantitative. So for four of them, we could use a, a z-test for proportions z-test for proportions. Next we have to think how many groups have we got? Do we have one sample or two samples? How many groups are we looking at? How many uh, samples have we taken to figure out what it is we want to know? So how many samples do each of the following have? Well if we want to estimate the percent of bikers who wear a helmet, you have to think who are we studying? Who are we looking at? Well we're looking at bikers, one group. Bikers, and we want to see among bikers what percent are wearing a helmet. So that would be one group, bikers. What percent of people called for jury duty are Hispanic? Well, who are we looking at here? We're looking at people who are called for jury duty, and we're wondering what percent of them are Hispanic. One group, people who are called for jury duty. Next, how big is the difference between the percent of high school students who are disappointed with school cancellations and the percent of elementary school students who are? Well, now we're looking at two groups, two groups of people, two samples. We take a sample of high school students and ask, are you disappointed? And we take a group of elementary school students and ask, are you disappointed? And compare those percents. Two groups, two groups. Are more than half of people in the U.S. currently avoiding restaurants? So who are we looking at? We want to look at people in the U.S. and say, are you avoiding restaurants? And see if more than half of them are. So the uh, number of samples would be one people in the U.S. 
Next, is there a difference between Canadians and U.S. residents in the percent that are self-isolating? So you're thinking, who would you ask? Who are you interested in finding out about? Well, you're interested in Canadians and U.S. residents and comparing them on the percent that are self-isolating. Two groups, two samples, Canadians and U.S. residents. And then finally, is the percent who catch the coronavirus lower among people who regularly wash their hands than people who don't? Again, who are you looking at? Who are you studying? Well, two different groups, people who wash their hands regularly and people who don't. Two samples, two samples. So when we think about what type of analysis we need, our first question is what kind of data do we have, categorical versus quantitative? Our second question, if we have the whole formula sheet, is do we need sample size? So that's something different. That's how many people do we need in order to figure this out? Third question is how many samples do we have? How many samples do we have? And then the fourth question is, what's our purpose? Confidence intervals or hypothesis testing? And that's number four here. We can use either confidence intervals or hypothesis testing to draw conclusions about the entire population. So when do we use each? When do we use each? So first, we might want to estimate something in the population. We might want to know the percent of the whole population or the mean of the whole population. Or how big is the difference in the percents between two groups or the difference in means between two groups? So we want to know something. How big is something? Or we want to test a claim or answer a yes-no question about the population. Well, for which one do we use confidence intervals? We use confidence intervals just like it sounds. It gives us an interval, a range, in which we expect to find that which we want to know. So we use confidence intervals when we want to estimate something in the population. If we want to know the percent in the population, the confidence interval gives us this range in which we expect to find it. And then if we want to test a claim or answer a yes-no question, that's hypothesis testing. We'll end up at the end of our, our hypothesis testing procedure with an answer, a yes-no answer to our claim, to our question. So would you use confidence intervals or hypothesis testing for each of the above scenarios where we talked about one sample versus two. Well, if we want to estimate the percent of bikers who wear a helmet, we want to know what that is. What's the range in which we expect to find the true percent of bikers who are wearing a helmet? So that would be confidence interval. What percent of people called for jury duty are Hispanic? Well, we need the range. We need an interval into which we expect that true percent of all people called for jury duty who are Hispanic to fall. Confidence interval. What is the thing? Where do we expect to find it? What's the range in which this falls? Next, how big is the difference between the percent of high school students who are disappointed with school cancellations and the percent of elementary school students who are? Well, again, we wanna know what something is. What is it? How big is the difference? So a confidence interval will give us that interval, that range, in which we expect the difference in population percents to fall. Next, are more than half of people in the U.S. currently avoiding restaurants? Are more than half? Yes or no? That is a uh, question that we can answer with hypothesis testing. Yes or no? Are more than half of people in the U.S. currently avoiding restaurants? Hypothesis testing. Next, is there a difference between Canadians and U.S. residents in the percent that are self-isolating? Is there a difference? Yes or no? Hypothesis testing. We're testing the hypothesis, the claim, that there's a difference or no difference between Canadians and U.S. residents. And then finally, is the percent who catch a coronavirus lower among people who regularly wash their hands than people who don't? Yes, no question. We want to test the hypothesis that the percent who catch coronavirus is lower or not lower between these two groups of people. So we talked about what is inference, using the sample to draw conclusions about the whole population. What kind of data do we use with z-tests? That's categorical groups or categories. How many samples did we take? How many groups are we examining to figure out something? Well, one or two, one or two. We're either looking at one group or we're comparing two groups. And then finally, do we wanna do a confidence interval do we want to know the range, the interval into which something falls, or are we asking a yes-no question, in which case we'll use hypothesis testing. That's it for this section. Uh, the next video, we'll talk about chapters 19 and 20.